For some reason, I enjoy debates with the most frustrating apologists the best. And there are few apologists more frustrating than Cy Ten Bruggenkate. And what I, as a presuppositionist, do is I show, I expose the fact that atheist presuppositions cannot account for rationality. Okay, so fair enough. Um, so someone born and parents are atheist, they raise them atheist, never go to church, and they th firmly st state that they, do they don't believe in God at all. You're saying that they do because it doesn't make sense not to? So I'm a science person, I'm so I'm trying to understand. Yeah, so. well, what I'm saying, for instance, is that um, in, in the Bible it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. All the, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Jesus Christ. So when... I, I'm saying that it's innate knowledge that people have of God, and they expose this knowledge of God when they make knowledge claims, when they try and um, right. behave rationally in this world because they cannot make sense of it without him. I wonder what Sai thinks a knowledge claim is. He seems to believe that a knowledge claim is a claim to complete apodictic certainty about something. If that's what a knowledge claim is, then I've never made a knowledge claim in my entire life. I have never made an assertion that I considered to be absolutely indisputable. Not even the assertion I'm making in this very sentence. Sai often says that this is self-refuting, but I think there's a difference between self-refuting worldviews and self-critical worldviews. For example, a skeptic who reject skepticism would be a contradiction, but there's nothing contradictory about a skeptic who critically evaluates the value of skepticism. Would it not follow logically if the person did not know that God exists, had no concept of God, if he existed, and they stood before he him and God says, well, I'm going to send you to hell for not believing in me, would that not, that wouldn't make sense. No, You're right. It doesn't make sense that a God would That's damn right. somebody that, for that not, not believing in them. It's interesting that Sai understands that it doesn't make sense that Yahweh would send somebody to hell for not believing in a God about which they may be totally ignorant, or for simply not being convinced in the existence of such a God. Neither of these things are within a person's control, so it would make no sense for God to punish them for it. So Sai concludes, against all evidence to the contrary, that all people really do believe in God, apparently from birth. And my question for Aaron, and I asked him on the show too, is what is truth according to your worldview? And he cannot justify truth without God. I'm not sure what Psy thinks would count as justification, but in my opinion, a belief is justified as long as it seems to explain experience in a way that allows what consistently appear to be accurate predictions about experience, it is maximally parsimonious, and is falsifiable. The reason why these criteria justify a belief is that these are the criteria that make a belief most useful for navigating experience. It is the utility of ideas for navigating experience that make them worth believing. When you were describing presuppositional apologetics, you said, I'm not going to offer evidences to the atheist because the atheist can't understand truth until he first repents. So in your order of things, I must first repent, repent for my sins. Why do you have sins in the first place? Well, hold on. That's the point. His, his argument is that you first repent for your sins, and once you repent then you can be revealed the truth. If people can't be convinced by arguments or evidence until they repent, what is the point of evangelizing to atheists at all? Why would Psy ever expect his debates to have any effect? 